Brothers and sisters in the faith, once again, we shall be feeding our souls with the words of God. And 
The topic we are going to discuss today is about overcoming the adversary or the enemy. As we continue in our service and in our praises to God, there will be some sort of hindrance because we have an enemy who wants to attack us and who wants to stop us from giving honor and glory to our God. That's why we need to know who is this enemy and how are we going to overcome his tactics. It's but right today that we try to figure out how to overcome our enemy. Now, who is our enemy? Let's read. And this is what we can read in 1 Peter 5, verse 8. Control yourselves and be careful. The devil is your enemy. And he goes around like a roaring lion looking for someone to attack and eat. So who is our enemy? It is clearly stated in a verse that we have just read, the devil is your enemy, the Apostle Peter said. Now, Yahushua the Christ taught us that we have to love our enemy. This is the only enemy that we are not going to love. Right? That's the enemy that we will never love. But beside him, where we can love our enemies, okay, the people that he actually what? He actually deceived. We can love those people. But this deceiver, this devil, is no, not going to be loved at all. And what is he doing? He says, it says there, he goes around like a roaring lion looking for someone to attack and eat. Who were those someone? That's you and me. You know, the people of the world, he don't need to attack them anymore. Those who are not with us, they, he doesn't need to attack them and eat them anymore because they belong to him already. But us, he is our target. Now, how did the devil become our enemy? Let's find out the answer to that. And that is what we can read here in Revelations chapter 2 and the verse 12 is verse 17. And the dragon, it's also the devil, was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God. And have the testimony of Christ, Yahushua. How did the devil become our enemy? Because the devil declared war with the remnant of the seed of the woman. Now, who is this devil who declared war with the remnant? Well, if you're going to read in Revelation chapter 12 and the verses 9, this great dragon, see the dragon being referred to there, the ancient serpent, also called the devil or Satan. So, the dragon being referred to there is also the devil or Satan. The one who is deceiving the whole world. That's our enemy. This is the same old ancient serpent. Who deceived Adam and Eve. We already know that. He is the devil. He is Satan. Now who is this woman? Whose remnant the devil or Satan will declare war with? Well, according to the Apostle Paul, if you are going to be reading verses, it says there in, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and 12, I'm not going to show it to you there, but that, that's the, the, the passage. Uh, the, 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 one, the woman being referred to is the pure maiden, because it says there, I am anxious for you with a deep concern of God himself. Anxious that your love should be for Christ alone, just as a pure maiden. So the woman being referred to is the pure maiden. And we already know that the church was likened to a chaste virgin. The maiden is the church. Whose church? The church that was built by our Lord and Savior, Yahushua. Now, according to the Bible, the devil has a strong vengeful anger towards her Remnant. Oh, the remnant. Huh? The devil is so angry with the remnant of the woman. Now, which is this testimony? Remember, 
remember what we have just read in that verse that we have just read. Let me uh, show you something in there. Uh, make war with the remnant of her seed. Now who amongst the remnant of her seed? Those who keep the commandments of whom? Are we keeping the commandments? Yes, we do keep the commandments. We investigated the commandments of God deeply, beloved brethren. That's why we understood what we got before. There are lots of corrections that we need to make. Like believing in uh, judgment day. You know, many people say, I want to be saved on the day of judgment. That's good. That's why I'm in the church. That's good. But do you know when the day of judgment will be? Oh, that will be on the return of our Lord Yahweh, Jesus Christ. That's what they call him. That's the, on the return of Yahushua the Christ. That will be the day of judgment. Don't you know that that's a wrong thinking? On the day that Yahushua will touch down on earth, he's not going to judge yet. Judgment day is after 1,000 years of his reign. So if you are waiting for your salvation on the day of judgment, then you are not included in the first resurrection. As clear as that. See? Now remember, those who keep the commandments, those who can keep the commandments are those who know the commandments. How can you keep a commandment that you don't know, you don't understand? You have to understand first the commandment in order for you to keep it correctly. That's why the devil is so angry with the remnant of the woman. Because they know the commandment and they are keeping it. Now, which is this testimony of the Christ Yahushua that these remnants have. Because that's what it says there. And have the testimony of Christ Yahushua. Which is this testimony of the Christ Yahushua that the remnant of the woman have. Let us again read Revelation 19.10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Yahushua. Worship God for the testimony of Yahushua is the spirit of prophecy. So which is this testimony of the Christ Yahushua that these remnants have? It is the spirit of what? Prophecy. The remnants of the woman who the devil declared war with has a prophecy. The remnants have already been foretold. It, they have already been foretold in the scriptures. Now, which prophecy? Which prophecy? Which prophecy refers to the remnants of the woman? Let us again read what is recorded here in Isaiah 1, 8 to 9. So the daughter of Zion is left as a booth in a vineyard, as a hut in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city, unless Yahuwah of hosts had left to us a very small remnant, we would have become like Sodom. We would have been made like Gomorrah. So which prophecy refers to the remnants of the woman? The remnants that are those very small remnant from the daughter of Zion, the remnants from the church of Yahusha in these last days. And that's us, beloved brethren. We believe, yeah, people will not believe what we believe. Well, we don't care what we believe. What we care is what we believe in, what we got. And what we got is the testimony of Yahusha, which is the spirit of what? Prophecy, the very small remnant the one that was left in the daughter of Zion. We were all taught by the messenger of God in these last days that the daughter of Zion is the church of Christ or the church of Yahushua today. Now there is a very small remnant. There were people who were left because majority already left. You know, they thought we are the ones who left. Oh no, they were the ones who left. What proves that? Well, because they are no longer they are not the very small remnant. They are the big chunk. You see, we did not leave. They did. They left the policy. They left the doctrine. They left many things. Uh, why is it that many of them did not, were not able to uh, figure it out? Well, because 
they have those buildings with them. They thought that is the church, isn't it? And so we have to investigate deeply in the Holy Scriptures. Now, what is one of the devil's war strategies against the very small remnants that church of Yahushua in these last days? Let us hear in Matthew 12, 25. Yahushua knew what the Pharisees were thinking. So he said to them, every kingdom that fights against itself will be destroyed. And every city or family that is divided against itself will not survive. So beloved brethren, what is one of the devil's war strategies against the very small remnants, the church of Yahushua in these last days? Well, you can read right there this, the answer. It is the war strategy of the, the, the devil to divide and conquer. Isn't it? They will divide. Are they dividing families today? Uh, are their families being divided? Yes. And they are using the name of God to divide us. Right? So remember, that's not God's policy. To divide and conquer is the devil's technique or tactic in destroying the remnant of the woman. Divide, conquer. It's happening. And the scripture says, every kingdom that fights against itself will be destroyed. You know, the devil is trying to destroy us by dividing us, isn't it? It happened to us many times. But she still continues. You know? That's why we will never we will never succumb to that technique of the devil. Now, what is the Apostle Paul's concern about Yahushans? Which cause division? Here it is. Second Corinthians 12, 20. For I am afraid that when I come, I won't like what I find. And you won't like my response. I am afraid that I will find quarreling, jealousy, anger, selfishness, slander, gossip, arrogance, and disorderly behavior. So what is the Apostle Paul's concern about Yahushans, which cause, may cause division? And which is also, he knew, it is the technique or the tactic of the devil or the dragon to stays war against the remnant. Well, it is recorded there. It is the attitude of one Yahushan towards another Yahushan. So always be reminded of this, beloved brethren. It is the demeanor or outward behavior of one Yahushan towards another Yahushan. We are all Yahushans here. So our demeanor towards each other could be the source of the divide. Now, what are all these outward behaviors and attitudes that the Apostle Paul is so much concerned about? You have heard and you have read right there. He said quarreling. Is it good to quarrel? No. So stop that. We should not do that. We are not doing that actually amongst us anymore, right? <laughs> Jealousy. Oh, who's jealous of one another now? No more. We are not like that anymore. That was probably before, you know. Anger. Oh, we are easily angered before, isn't it? Selfishness. Kamilang aligtas. We are the only ones to be what? To be saved. You are all doomed unless you join us. Selfishness. Slander. You're slandering other people so that he will not be listened to anymore, isn't it? Ruining its other's reputation, character assassination, gossip, arrogance, always critical of each other. Are we still critical of each other, beloved brother? Not anymore. In the church of Yahushua, we love one another. Because it's not our relationship, you know, together. It's our relationship individually with whom? That matters. You know, right now, we are together because we are close to each other. 
but there are some Yahusians who probably are not here or probably in a different place, but they are practicing what they're supposed to practice. They are our brethren and brothers too, brothers and sisters too. So this is one thing that could ruin the very remnant of the woman or the church, the very small remnant, if we succumb to this technique of the devil. So always be, always be uh, aware of what the devil is going to do. Right? If, you are, if, you are, if you have an enemy, you are aware of his moves. We have to be aware of his moves. You know, I don't think it's wise you know, if somebody is going to say, you know what, uh, our enemy on that side, we're going to broadcast to them what we're going to be doing. Do you think that's fun? That's a good thing? No. We need to know what they're doing, right? We need to know what they are doing. So always be reminded of these things. This is the devil's lure. Now, what will be the serious result brought about by all these unruly outward behaviors and attitudes of a Yahushan towards a Yahushan? That's why we are, are we saying this because there are some who are doing it right now? No, so that we will be aware of whose technique or tactic the devil because that's what he's going to be using every day. So in Galatians chapter 5 and verses 15, this is what we can read. We will be reading different uh, translations. Galatians 5.15, Amplified, and then ERV. Easy to read version. But if you bite and devour one another in bickering and strife, watch out that you, along with your entire fellowship, are not consumed by one another. If you continue hurting each other and tearing each other apart, be careful or you will completely destroy each other. Now, beloved brethren, what will be the serious result brought about by all these unruly outward behaviors and attitudes? We will tear each other apart by hurting each other as what the apostle Paul clearly stated in those verses. We will devour one another when we bicker, when we argue about petty things, when we argue about small trivial things, causing more and more strife or division. Example of a monkey scratching a very small wound, isn't it? A healing wound where the wound gets bigger and bigger and then gets infected. That could happen. We don't need to be here one another and to argue all the time. All we need to do is, okay, what does the Bible want me to do? What does God want me to do? Let me, oh, I heard it from that minister. Oh, let me see what that minister actually said. He is telling something. Let me read it. Do you remember who are the people who are like that? Who were like that during the time of the apostles, beloved brethren? Please give me an answer. The Bereans. So before we don't even know who the Bereans are because we were always being taught copy the Macedonians. Macedonians and Macedonians there, Macedonians everywhere, isn't it? That's what we are always being reminded about. But now we are being reminded, okay, be as Macedonian, but never forget being a what? A Berean too. Well, what does it mean? Investigating before they believe in something. That's why we are always telling Everyone in the church of Yahusha, don't just believe us as we preach to you. After this worship service, you are reading that, investigate if that is actually what it's supposed to be the topic, isn't it? Of that discussion. You know, because the Bible, people can just, you know, get an excerpt from the Bible and give his private interpretation to it without you knowing. Like what we have already studied in the past, Matthew 18, 18. We were taught, oh, that's registration. If I register you here on earth, then you are registered where? When we investigated it, brother, that's not registration. That is when you are actually trying to uh, fix something amongst the brethren. When the brethren are having some animosity with one another, that verse is what it says. Whatever you forbid here on earth must be the one that was already forbidden in heaven. That much makes sense than when you are telling the people, hey, this is the 
power given to me that if I register you here on earth, then you are registered over there in heaven. That's why people are so scared not to be removed from what? If they are so scared to be removed from their registry. See, beloved brethren, that's why we need to make certain that whatever we do, we investigate first, right? We don't need to argue. Investigate. I preach, you investigate. That's what we are always reading during worship service. You know, if you are uh, like uh, code red, when, when you look around you, you can see there, you know, on the first, uh, you know, when they are, when we are already flashing our video or that, what do you call this thing? The slide, it says there, the one who plants, the one who waters, does not what? It, I don't matter. What matters is God who make the plants what? Grow. See, it's not the messenger. It's the message. Now, the messenger will preach, and probably he might include something that he believes is there. Now, what is your duty after it was delivered to you, beloved brother? Investigate it. Oh, did he say it right? Let me see. That's the way that devil will never win. Because we know the commandments and we are obeying it correctly. So that would be the result, right? Uh, if uh, Yahushans are found in that kind of uh, attitude or behavior, it's not going to be nice. Don't make the... What else is another result? Well, let's read in Ephesians 4, 30, 31. I don't make the Holy Spirit sad. God gave you his spirit as proof that you belong to him. And that he will keep you safe until the day he makes you free. Never be bitter, angry, or mad. Never shout angrily or say things to hurt others, never do anything evil. Now, what is one result if Yahushans are found in these non Yahushan behaviors and division amongst themselves? Well, according to what we have read there, it makes the Holy Spirit what? Sad. The Holy Spirit that serves as a proof that we belong to whom? To Yahuwah. Our God. Now, why would the Holy Spirit be sad? Because when we display those behaviors and becoming a Yahushan, it seems like we do not belong to Yahuwah. It seems like we do not belong to the one body, the one church Yahushua has sacrificed his life for. What had happened to Yahuwah's command? Be holy because I am holy. See, that's what Yahuwah said. Be holy because I am what? Holy. He says there, uh, he will keep you safe until the day he makes you free. Never, okay, this is the command now. Never be what? Bitter. Never be what? Angry. Never be mad. Never shout angrily. Or say things to hurt others. You know, when they say bad things to us, we just shrug our shoulders. Well, that's what he believes. Is it? Let's try to teach ourselves to be a Yahushan. Because it's, we should practice this thing, beloved brother. We cannot just be saying, I'm a Yahushan, but you know what? You're doomed on the day of judgment anyway. That's what people are always saying, telling other people. Many people are doing that kind of thing. They say they are, they are Yahushua. Oh, they are Christians. They call themselves Christians. But they judge others. So we don't need to do these things no more. So these are the things that we have to put to stop as Yahushua. Now, it's up to you, Pope. Right? We are not going to impose it on you. We are learning something, and we have to convince ourselves that we will do it. You know, the thing here is this. Unlike before, we are always being told what to do. Today, you have to decide what you need to do. Like what we told those who are newly baptized in the church of Yahushua, we told them this. Now that you are a baptized member in the church of Yahushua, now you have to convince Yahuwah 
and Yahusha to include you to be met by Yahusha in the air on the day of the first resurrection. So it's a job now that it was given to each and every one of us, beloved brethren. You have to convince Yahuwah, Yahusha. I have to convince them. I cannot make a promise, you know, like what others were telling their parishioners or their members. They said they can offer salvation. I can't, you know. I'm a preacher, but I can never offer salvation. Salvation is only being offered by God. Through whom? Through the Christ. So if you want to convince somebody that you want salvation, it's whom? It's God and Yahushua. So what should each one do so as not to be conquered by our great enemy, the devil? Let us hear. First Peter 3, 8, 9. Finally, all of you be like-minded, united in spirit, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, courteous, and compassionate toward each other as members of one household, and humble in spirit, and never return evil for evil or insult for insult. Avoid scolding, berating, and any kind of abuse, but on the contrary, give a blessing Pray for one another's well-being, contentment, and protection. For you have been called for this very purpose, that you might inherit a blessing from God that brings well-being, happiness, and protection. So what should each one of us do so as not to be conquered by our great adversary, the devil? We should have an antidote to the poisonous schemes of the devil. We should be like-minded. When there is like-mindedness, there will be no divisions. There should be unity in his spirit. We should love one another as brothers and sisters in the faith. There should be sympathy towards each other. There should be empathy towards each other. Now, what are the differences between those two words? Sympathy involves understanding from your own perspective, right? That's sympathy. You sympathize with others. You are understanding their situation because you understand their situation. Yeah, you understand. on Because of your own perspective, the way you are seeing it. Empathy involves putting yourselves in the other person's shoes and understanding why they may have these particular feelings. That's why those who are actually attacking us, the people, not the devil, right? Because the devil is using the people, right? So we should have empathy with them. We should understand why, because that's their faith, that's their belief. They were so scared that if they lose their registration, they're gonna lose their salvation. That's what they believe. We empathize with those people, beloved brethren. We don't attack them. We just wait. You know? We just wait. When they ask us the question, you know what? Here, come here. I'm going to explain it to you. This is what the Bible teaches. You believe the Bible, isn't it? Yes. So if you believe the Bible, you can read it right here. That's what we do, beloved brethren. We have differences. People will always have differences. But we don't need to fight. Or we don't need to destroy one another because of it. Isn't it? That's the devil already working. We don't want the devil to be given a chance. We should be courteous, the scripture says. We should be polite and respectful towards each other, even if their opinion or, or stand might differ from ours. I hope that we are learning these things today. We need to be tender hearted. We need to keep a humble attitude. There must be compassion towards one another as members of one household, the household of Yahuwah. And that's what we want to be, beloved brethren. We will never succumb to the devil's lure. 
The devil wants divide. The devil wants war. The devil wants fight. We don't. We will fight him the way God wants us to fight the devil. See? He is telling the people to hate us. God is telling us, love those people. Do you think the devil's technique will win over God's? Tell me. That's what we need to create ourselves into, beloved brethren. That's why this lesson will guide us towards being Yahushua's. Now, how do we make sure that we will not be taken advantage by the devil if we are good already? Or let us read here in 2 Corinthians 2, 11, the last verse for this homily, to keep Satan from taking advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his scheme. So how do we make sure that we will not be taken advantage of by Satan? We should not be ignorant of Satan's scheme. That is the reason why, beloved brethren, we are studying this lesson. We are trying to figure out how will the devil will work. See, if a preacher will tell us, let's say a preacher, in the name of God, he is preaching. But he tells you, don't talk to that person. Think about it. But why should I not talk to that person? You know, sometimes they will say, well, because you know what? They might influence you. If that is the kind of preacher I have in my church, this is what I'm going to ask that preacher. Don't you trust my guts? Don't you trust that I am a believer? That I can easily be taken away simply because I talk to somebody who is not at the same faith that we have? Talk to him, I did that. But there are preachers who are like that, isn't it? Telling their members, not just telling them not to talk to us, not even to what? Pray for us. You see? We are being taught by God, pray for them. See, the devil said, don't pray for them because the devil will always oppose who? See? God said, pray for them. Yahushua said, pray for them. Love your enemy. The devil says, no, hate them. They are a threat, isn't it? Just look at that. So, want to be a Yahushua? Be like Yahushua. That's the way we should do things. We should know the scheme of the devil so that he will not win. What is his tactics? What are his arsenals? Before we combat against him, right? Now remember... As we have already studied in the past, beloved brethren, we have to put the full armor of whom when we fight? The full armor of God. The devil has techniques and tactics. We have to know that so that we know where to hit him. If we will be this vigilant on Satan's schemes, then there is no chance, beloved brethren. There is a zero chance that Satan, the devil, will conquer us, but instead we will be, we will by obeying all these instructions, overcome our adversary, our enemy that we can love, the devil. I hope that this lesson will guide all of us. We have an enemy that we cannot love, but all of these victims, the people, our loved ones, our fellow brethren before that were duped and deceived by the work of the devil, we have to love them. Yes, they are throwing many things on us, but we're not going to throw them back anything that will hurt them. No, we respect what they believe. But if they ask questions, we will be there to answer them, give them the answer, and we will answer correctly because we know the doctrine. That's why when we answer, we give them what we believe. We already wrote it down so that each and every one of us should go there from time to time, beloved brothers and sisters in the Church of Yahushua, go there to our website and always read the declaration of belief of a Yahushua. And then read those passages. Try to learn more. 
because we cannot learn by just congregating once a week for an hour. We need time. We need to give more time to investigate and try to figure out. Something happened. We all know that something happened in the church that we so love. But that's God's work. We have to see that's God's work. God actually fulfilled already what he said a long time ago, that the third part of the church of Yahushua will undergo through the fire. We already underwent through the fire. We should come up victoriously. And unfortunately, a very few came up victoriously. Very few of us. Now us, who are very few, amongst the remnant of the woman or of the church, we have to be prepared because the devil will not stop until he destroys the very small remnant. And that's not going to, we're not going to let that happen. May we continue to be strong in our faith and may we continue to remember all the time what we are studying. Let us all rise, beloved brethren, we shall be praying. Merciful God, Yahuwah, we are so grateful for you are always equipping us with your armor so that we can fight our enemy, Satan. Father, thank you for giving us this opportunity to hear your words, to hear your instructions. Embed them deep in our hearts and minds and send us please the Holy Spirit that all of these instructions will always be reminded to us that we may completely obey and give honor and glory to your holy name. Amen. Father, please bless all of your people, the very small remnant the remnant of the church or of the woman. Protect us, Father, all the time. And we are so grateful because we are not just hearing your promises, but we are actually enjoying them. Because when we ask something from you, in the blink of an eye, you are already giving it to us. When we ask for you for peace, you gave us peace. When we ask for you to bless our family, you have blessed our family right away. When we ask for you of our needs, just right away, you are giving us what we need. Thank you, Father, for being our Father, for being our God. And because of that, we will never betray you. You are the priority in our heart. Thank you, Yahushua the Christ, for mediating us to our Father. Thank you for giving us this strong faith so that we may continue to serve and praise our Father, Yahuwah. We firmly believe, Father, that you have already blessed each and every one of us. You have pardoned us of the sins that we have done. And you will continue to guide us as we continue to gather ourselves in celebration. For all of this, we are asking in the name of your Son, our Lord and Redeemer, Yahushua the Christ. Amen. Amen. saving grace of our Lord and Savior, Yahushua the Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Okay, beloved brethren, uh, please continue to share our faith to others and utilize the declaration of beliefs. All we need to do is if you can make copies of those and just give it away, or you can just tell them where our website is, how to go to our website and just read it. If they're interested, then they can be a Bible student. And please email us also at uh, questions at churchofyahusha.org with any questions you have. Even the brethren, you know, not only those who you are trying to uh, share your faith with, even you, if you do have a question, then you can write us there and we will try our very best to reply back the answer. This concludes our worship service and may we all have a very good Sunday. Oh, God.